Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Transport Evolved. It's my turn for another thought of the day, and that means somebody's going to give me a thumbs down on a video. Yes, I've noticed. Every video, somebody gives me one thumbs down. And I think it's the same person. I've caught you at it. Mwahaha. I really enjoyed your thoughts on EV ads um, and what you were saying about Tesla first. I only have one response. Tesla wow, many coins, such profit. So ads, yeah, you're right. Uh, ad execs probably don't drive EVs um, and drivers do make the best ads because they're the ones who sit behind the wheel and they are the ones who know what EVs are like to drive on a daily basis. They know that they are smooth and they are fast and they are efficient. And um, EVs are different, Mark. I think we need to not pretend they're not. They are different to petrol cars, but that's like saying a, a Great Dane and a pug. They're both dogs, but they're different. Uh, a Tesla and, and um, an S-Class Mercedes-Benz are both cars, but they're very different. They're powered in different ways. They have different ethos behind them. And I think one of the problems with EV ads that I've noticed, and, and the reason why I came up with the question in the first point was, they're afraid of EVs being different. I don't think that we should be afraid of EVs being different. So Gallons of Light, I really love that film. I think it's it's really, really well done. And I think one of the reasons why it's so well done is because the person behind it really gets the car and they love it. So we're going to talk about Bob and um, trucks or trucks, as you said a minute ago, um, with the capital letters. People are really dismissive of trucks and I don't get it. You know, trucks are not bad. The F-150 is America's number one best-selling light duty vehicle. I think we need to accept that people like pickup trucks. Um, are they practical for people who live in suburbia? No, but then ditto with SUVs. And we're now seeing plug-in SUVs on the market. The argument that we shouldn't electrify trucks just applies to SUVs not being electrified either. And we've got the Toyota RAV4 EV and that's electrified. I think the thing we need to realise with trucks is that there are hundreds of independent workers around the world, self-employed people, tradespeople, uh, artisan builders, carpenters, electricians, florists, whatever you want, whoever they are, whatever they do, who have a need for a light commercial vehicle like a pickup truck or a van um, that is a plug-in hybrid. And I think I think Vias really cleverly coined them coined that little corner of the market. By the way, it wasn't the Boston uh, Motor Show. I don't know if Boston has an auto show. It was the Detroit Motor, uh, Motor Show, or the Detroit Auto Show, or the North American International Auto Show, if you want to call it that. Trucks are sexy uh, to a lot of people. I think we just, you know, we need to understand that and accept that. And it's not a bad thing. Horses for courses, people are different. And Bob, Bob's in it for the money, just like he is with the El Destino. He's there to make money because Bob, maximum Bob, He's an auto industry guy. He's a legend in the auto industry. Um, he's said some horrible things about EVs in the past and some great things about EVs in the past. And frankly, these days, I think Bob Lutz is chasing EVs and plug-in hybrids because he knows it's the future. He knows it's going to make a lot of money. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the near future he dabbles in hydrogen or he dabbles in some other fuel technology too. He likes to hedge his bets. But what I want to talk to you today about, Mark, is BMW and the i3 and California, the Air Resources Board. You see, the i3 uh, BEV, the electric version of the i3, is on Californian Air Resources Board website for the exemption for the white, so, so that you can get your white HOV lane sticker. Um, other cars are on there as well that are green uh, sticker eligible. Those ones are ones with gasoline engines, so things like the plug-in Prius, uh, the Chevy Bolt, even the Caddy ELR is on there now. But the BMW i3 REX is missing. There are only so many stickers left. The green sticker program is limited to 40,000 stickers and most people think those 40,000 stickers will all be gone by May. BMW, when I rang them up today, wouldn't tell me if they're working with the CARB. They, they can't comment, they said, on whether you know, um, the car's been submitted for certification or not, or how far through it is. All, B all BMW said was, we engineered this car so that it would be compliant with the green lane, the green stickers, which is kind of not helping the matter. And it makes me wonder, is this just, is this just a problem with BMW's press? Is it a problem with their engineering team? 
and and why are they failing and moreover why are why does every company seem to fail with its first ev to the market they struggle one way or the other chevy struggled nissan has struggled bmw has struggled ford has struggled mitsubishi has struggled they they just no, they don't seem to be learning from the past and in this case i think ev advocates and owners in some cases know better than some of the teams working on the evs and it makes me wonder why is BMW struggling so much to get this message out and the pricing messages out and people saying they're not going to get a BMW i3 at all um, who've been on the Active E programme. And it's just, it's sad. So what's up, BMW? I hope you have a really good weekend, Mark, and I hope everyone at home has a really good weekend. See you on Monday. Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Transport Evolved. Oh, and we'll see you on Sunday for a show. Bye.